Well, I think the better question to ask is, who is Balin looking at? Who is at the end of that light? And welcome back, Desk Poppers, <laughs> to the greatest show on the planet. Today, I'm joined with my ever lovely co hosts, Daniel and Adolfo. Hey. Hey. And today, we're going to be going over the top five moments in Ahsoka, part eight. <laughs> Season one finale, The Jedi, The Witch, and The Warlord. And make sure you stay all the way to the end of the video because we're going to be coming up with our best conspiracy theories for season two, potentially, and just talking about the episode overall. And the series as a whole. But first off, yeah, I, thumbs, I told you I, look, I, I like it. Yeah, I thought uh, it was a great. I thought it was uh, a great. I think Daniel's a little iffy. I was, I was the same boat as Daniel, but I'm leaning more towards this than this. So yeah, you know what? I'm gonna go with one of those. Damn, bro, y'all really didn't like it. Well, here we are, just to first of all talk about the top five moments, and then we'll we'll get into it. Number five moment for Ahsoka, episode eight. Hugh Yang and Ezra. I really d did like that they brought up Caleb, or as uh, he goes by Kanan ja Jarrus? Yes. John. Kanan Jarrus. Look at uh, you getting it right on the first try. Ah, <laughs> you were pronouncing the name right and everything. Because I've been practicing. <laughs> <laughs> Last night, I just spent an hour Kanan Jarrus, Kanan Jarrus. <laughs> just in the mirror. That was a really cool moment. Uh, he made a lightsaber exactly the way that Kanan made it. Dude, I don't know if a lot of people know this about Hu Yang, but he's been around since the High Republic. He he says he uh he's taught almost every youngling at the temple. That's so crazy. He's been around for at least two hundred or more years that he's been around. And, and the fact that they never wiped his memory at all, like yeah. at any point. So yeah. he he knows everything. Like C three PO because they wipe his memory like every other movie. And R <laughs> yeah, R two D two too. Yeah. yeah, man. So I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, that's really interesting that they, they didn't wipe his memory at all. Yeah. I was trying to do the math. I was like, well, if he's been around, like how many years has it been? Like at least a couple hundred. The high Republic is a hundred years before the start of Phantom Menace. Um, it was funny how he caught Ezra off guard with that because mm -hmm. he was like, "Wait, you knew my master?" He's like, "Yeah, I knew like everybody did." Like, <laughs> yeah, he's like, "I'm the one that taught him what you're doing right now." Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and uh, Hu Young was also surprised that Ezra was the Padawan to, to, to Kanan. Kanan. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to call him Caleb. He's like now. you, <laughs> you, <laughs> you. <laughs> the same thing with Sabine. He's like you. Yeah, what? <laughs> like I don't know. I just thought that was really cool. Oh uh, yeah, and the uh, number four moment, uh, Elspeth with the witches, uh, gifting her the blade of Tarzan. I just I like that moment because I was talking to a coworker from work, and he was telling me like, "Oh man, I rewatched Rebels, I rewatched Clone Wars," and he was talking to me like really excited about it. And this is just from Clone Wars when Mace Windu yes. fights with one of the witches there, and she's using the blade of Tarzan. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if the blade of Tarzan like is as strong as a lightsaber. I was gonna say how power wise, where where do we rank it as far as a lightsaber, the dark saber, and well, I mean, they blade. can hit each other, so I mean, it's not, yeah, as equally as uh, didn't she chop up one of Ahsoka's lightsabers with that? Yeah, but, yeah, she, but she hit the, the, hand the handle. handle, yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying. The handles are like the weak point of, yeah. of a lightsaber. I don't know why people don't do that more though. Like when you're in a fight, like go for the the hands right yeah, away. Go like, for the hill. And the number three moment, guys, is Balin at the end of the episode overlooking the with the Mojas gods, the father and the son, and we do have the daughter missing, and he's looking over the mountain where there's a light beam just shining on a mountain, just, just off yeah. in the distance. You know, I really love this moment, but the whole time I was like, how did Thrawn not see this mountain that has a light just? Like, like shining, way out there. Yeah, yeah. Beaming, beaming on top of the mountaintop. You, you have like this giant statue of the son and the father, mm -hmm. and it's on the same planet. And they've been there 10 years. You would think, I mean, maybe he doesn't have the resources to be exploring, but it doesn't look like Balin walked a lot, you know? Maybe like a day's trip. Not even a day's trip. Maybe it only comes up at like a certain <laughs> time. I was thinking about that. I was like, maybe this is just coming up for like, Balin. Like a during, like a, uh, yeah, there you go. Like he was the one that was supposed to see it. I really thought it was going to be more of a sinister because we talked about it. Yeah. We'll talk about it more in the conspiracy theories. I thought it was going to be more of a sinister ploy, but I think this is going to be more honorable for uh, for him. <laughs> and he's going down a better path than I thought he was going to. Yeah. So number two in our top five moments, Thrawn reaching Dathomir, which uh, we kind of saw coming a little. No, I did not. I, I did not think that was going to be his first stop. You don't think so? No, I just, yeah, I guess like he's not going to go straight to like attack the <laughs> rebels or the new Republic. Okay, I guess that's his only stop since yeah. he has the three witches on board with him. That's true. Once we had already predicted that Thrawn was going to get back, mm -hmm. like I just, everything else 
else kind of just fell in place, which is kind of why I didn't like this episode a lot either. I wasn't That's surprised by anything at all, but yeah, everything um, was supposed to fall in place. Though. Cause things fall pl into, I thought that's why I liked the episode. Cause unlike Secret Inv Inv Invasion, the penultimate episode, episode. really <laughs> said, like it really set everything up for the finale. Yeah. And that's how it should, do. like that's how. Yeah, I was, I was expecting a twist though. It's cause we're always used to like them fucking up the endings. What kind of twist? Something surprising. Cause our just... theories didn't come right. So. I mean, our theories did come right. Your theory did come In right. In a way. I mean, we'll talk about it more. But, yeah, we'll talk about it um, more. But. Oh yes, Thrawn reaching Dathomir. What do you think he goes from there? No, nah, he's just he builds a base and he starts operations on Dathomir. I mm -hmm. think that's that's yeah. what you do. Uh, we do have a couple honorable mentions before we get to our oh, top yes. moment. Thanks for reminding us. So I really do the best. I thought it was one of the best moments was the zombies like appearing in Star Wars. Zombies. Yeah, I I don't know if you guys think zombies deserve a place in uh, Star Wars, but I thought it was pretty cool. Well, we oh. talked about this before. Are they actually zombies or are they... Because we talked about the green mist yeah. Yeah. and all that. So, like, are they actually zombies or, or what are they? They're, they're they gotta be zombies because, yeah. I mean, they were dead. 100% they're zombies. I just didn't like that did, whole... Did they come back stronger or they just uh, were they already, like, winded from fighting them already? So, I think what happens is that they can't die. So, every time they take somebody down, they just reanimate oh, they just themselves. They come back up. And, yeah, I mean, eventually you get tired of fighting over and over again. Is what I'm assuming is happening. I just didn't like that. That whole scene because if they really wanted to they could have just decapitated every single one of them I get yeah it. So and, when you're and, fighting it, it, when it's all in the moment and you don't you've never seen it before well i saw i, I sent it to adolfo on twitter yeah. they have lightsabers and they have the force they yeah. literally could throw the lightsaber like a boomerang and be done with it and maybe she don't know that trick yeah bro that seems like uh that seems like an advanced trick like man the jedi have never seen this one before like I, though uh if any directors or anything like that for a future movie if you can do that trick that'd be really cool but <laughs> Boomerang. Mm. All you gotta do is just put me in the credits. Okay. Oh, uh, we, like it was my idea. <laughs> <laughs> we do have another honorable mention, which is Ahsoka and the Elspeth fight. And it's it's an honorable mention for me too, because I do think the choreograph for the fighting was really not well done. I, I thank you. It was yeah, not yeah. well done. Yeah. It was not well done. There's moments where all the I was about to be like, man, <laughs> you better not say it's a good fight. No, it's not. No, uh it's a good fight for for them. But the way they said... The way they presented it was yeah. just... Mm -hmm. Well, the way that... So, the troopers. the All the troopers were just circling Ahsoka, and they weren't doing anything. Yes. And I was like, are these troopers going to attack? You know are what they, they could have done is, like, just, like, slowly, like, push in. Yeah. Like, the circle smaller. Do something to, like, yeah, the suspense of it, yeah, all, you yeah, know? Yes. But they're just standing there. Sabine comes in, kind of helps, and then she starts fighting the troopers. And the yeah. troopers... And I'm like, guys, there's, like, a bunch of you, at least. They were just there just a little bit. Don't yeah. stand there. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Don't stand there. Don't be just... If you're going to do something, do something. They could have just been pillars. So it's funny. I went back because after I saw that on Twitter, people were complaining about that fight. Mm -hmm. I went back and rewatched Anakin and Obi-Wan's fight. Just the camera work alone in that fight versus this fight, that made the fight like so much better. Like It elevated that duel. I went back and rewatched the Ahsoka one yeah. with Elsbeth, and the camera is just like on one plane. Like You don't get any different camera angles it barely even moves um, you know it gives it a lack of depth i don't think it's fair though to compare it to a movie fight to a show no I, I'm, I think not it's more I'm not even talking about the camera quality yeah. i'm just talking about the angles of the yeah. camera and I, yeah but still, know, that's the same thing because sometimes shows are just shot with one camera you know i, I don't think this show's shot with no one camera. You, i'm just saying not, that not even that has... just like dude you can move the camera up you can move it at an angle you can I present say, it though, in a lot of different ways compared to it's like the fight's in Ahsoka, mm -hmm. too, it's like on the bottom. Just to like make a comparison to yes. like orange to orange and stuff yes. like that. I love the Balin versus Ahsoka fight. Both fights were great for me. And the Elspeth and Ahsoka fight just really... Fell flat. Yeah. If you're going to make the final fight, it should have been Balin versus Ahsoka. And Balin, uh, Ahsoka finally getting that win. Yeah. And also, yeah. Ahsoka's not been winning a lot no. in these fights. She's no. been... Dude, she, for a great... I don't think she's won a single thing in... In this show, yeah, no, I agree. Threat, like, no. maybe against Morocco when she killed him, but that was yeah. a zombie that we now yeah. know, you know. So, like, this whole and maybe Chin too, she kind of like just tossed around, yeah, but then again, she, but, she's new, yeah. But against like professional, like Balin and even Elsbeth, dude, she was losing for most of that fight, yeah, and she lost the lightsaber Consider against Elsbeth, yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. 
And this is oh. this is Anakin Skywalker's Padawan. Like you would think with her watching those recordings yeah, yeah, over so and she, over again, she'd be good. You know, Anakin is just looking down on her like, I didn't know I didn't teach you this. <laughs> I know, I know, I didn't teach you any of this. She's doing some real. Uh, what's that girl's name? Sabine, Sabine. fighting. Yeah, I, yeah, even Sabine right now is looking better. I, uh, yeah, but she should be looking bad. Yeah, it's, it's Ahsoka that shouldn't be looking like. Sabine. Yeah, I'm yeah. saying. I do think that you should have switched the roles to where Sabine's the one struggling, mm -hmm. and Ahsoka comes in to clean it up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is what it should have been. We do have the sponsor of today's video, as always. That's Pop. That's us, baby. That's us. <laughs> that was so um, sad. We're so close to a thousand, guys. I really want to thank y'all for this journey. Yeah, yeah, we're getting close. Only 75 away. Yes. As um, of this recording. The number one moment in Ahsoka is a bunch of moments for me. It's pretty much the whole ending with the owl appearing in front of Ahsoka, Ezra and Hera having their reunion together, mm -hmm. and Anakin's force. Ghost. Ghost. <laughs> Motherfucker. I'm looking over Sabine and Ahsoka and I just it was a very wholesome ending to the show even though all the characters are in a place where they don't want to be they're still safe they're still protected they still have a way forward in the story Anakin had a great role in this show I'm really happy they brought him back I'm a fan I was I was never one of those people who hated him no people never hated him yeah, yeah uh, dude. you dude, got people. so much hate. so here's uh, here's what i hate about star wars fans is that they'll hate whatever's out now mm -hmm. and then 10 years down the road they're gonna be like oh we always loved them we uh, always yeah, thought yeah. they were great and maybe th some of that is the kids growing up and always and, like, and realizing that they like well no they yeah. always like the kids always love the stuff right yeah, so yeah. now that they're older now they're the um the people who are the main star wars fans you know the adults or the let me ask you something since we're on the topic real quick yeah are star wars fans some of the most toxic fans out there 100 yeah. of any franchise i think we could do a ranking of who's the most toxic fans and star wars fans are number one easily 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 okay. dc is a close second though don't get me wrong <laughs> dc and dc haters are like a close <laughs> third. <laughs> i'm just yeah it's just a crazy fandom to be with but guys as always i know you guys stayed to the very end for these conspiracy theories and talking about season two and where it's going where where where's ahsoka going with all this are they making a movie are they going with season too. since we've already seen like the future per se oh the future you know with like the skywalker saga oh yeah yeah and like <laughs> or not them. the skywalker saga <laughs> i guess the skywalker saga is a whole thing with the disney trilogy i want to yeah. say how is ezra and ahsoka never brought up or even hinted at in those movies okay so this is what i think is happening different right story it is a different story uh, but the thing about like Dave you Filoni, think you think Luke Skywalker would have heard of a so because we've already seen him interact in Mandalorian and in uh, Boba Fett. Yeah, yeah. you would have you, you would think that he mentioned her, her name. Yeah, you it. would think that he would know. Oh, hey, Ahsoka got stuck in another universe. I'm not saying you have to name drop her. Just even hint at it. No, because here's I was thinking about that too. But the thing is that I got friends from high school that I never mention again. You know, I got people that like I had like really like great moments and things happened that were like highlights of my life and i'm never here on the podcast like hey guys remember you know or like just talking about it and maybe every once in a while i talk about it but like in those moments where there's action where they're like talking amongst themselves you're not gonna be like luke talking to ray and be like oh this one time you know may maybe off camera but like i mean considering that the jedi are practically extinct you would think that he would be like hey you know like maybe we should go find ahsoka yeah maybe but maybe ahsoka's not ahsoka. in the sequels Maybe she dies. And that's what I want to bring up. I do think that we're going to get a new father, son, and daughter as the gods. It's going to be Balin as a son, Ahsoka as a daughter, and Anakin as a son, as a, as a father. As a father. Yeah. Mm. I do I do think that's going to be the new tri uh, trinity. Or... In that universe. <clears throat> well, even if Ahsoka dies, though, Luke would have known that she got stuck in that other universe. Because Ezra would have brought it up. Uh, you don't know that. You have no idea what's Ezra's story going forward. You wouldn't think he'd be like, oh, hey, Ahsoka got stuck. Ezra has no idea who nah. Luke is. I want you to know that right now. Ezra has no idea right now. Ezra just found out that the, that the Republic won. But he like, you would eventually think that he would bring it up to somebody. Like It would go down the pipeline eventually. I think you're thinking too much about this. Yeah, you're going way too much yeah. into it. Because we don't even know Ezra's story for season two. I know, but I'm just saying like... No, you're thinking way too hard. I, I do want to say that I do think Dave Filoni does a great job to have stories that bridge these movies after the fact. So they made they already made the prequels and then he comes in and makes the Clone Wars. The original sequels already came out and he made Rebels to mm -hmm. like have a story within the story, you know? So I think Dave Filoni is doing a great job of 
bridging the gaps in between these movies. I think you were you thinking know. way too much about yeah, this, bro. Yeah. You don't even know what they're doing for season two, and you're already talking <laughs> we about... We don't even know if they're doing a season two. <sighs> That's what I also wanted to bring up. Nah, I bet they are. Uh, do you think they're going to do a movie or, yeah. uh, or a season two? I think they'll do a movie, uh, a, a season two. I do yeah. think they're doing a movie, but I think they're going to wait for one more season of each show. Of each show? Yeah, of Ma- The Mandalorian and uh, Ahsoka. Okay. Now, like, I wanted to clarify each show, like... Yeah. How many shows? Like, uh, what, you know, well, we Obi Wan and Andor like said in the past. So yeah, it, you know. plus they all did. No, he did die. Ray Stevenson yeah. died. Um, he passed away a couple months before the Ahsoka premiere. I don't know what they're gonna do with this character. What What do you guys think is the right move to do with the character himself? Since Ray Stevenson did pass away. Honestly, I just don't think they're ever gonna bring him up again. You don't think a new actor should just play Balin? I think a new oh, actor yeah, should yeah. play Balin, 100%. Oh, yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. That's what I thought That was the question. Yeah, was yeah but that's what I said. I, I no. A new actor should play said? him, but I don't think they're ever going to bring I, him up again. I, I think the character itself is too big in the show that they can't. Uh, okay, when you say never him bring him up again, who's him? Balin. Okay, so you're saying a new actor should play him, but they're never going to bring him up again? No. I just, I just think yeah, Disney's... That's, that's contradicting. What the fuck are you saying? Listen, yeah. I think Disney's just going to sweep it under the rug. I think they're just going to... What under the rug? Balin, like as a character. I Do I think they should like recast oh, okay. him? 100%. Yeah. yeah it, I just it, don't it, think Disney's going to, to do it. They're just going to move along with the no, story and I'm, never I'm, bring it back. No, no, no. The He's way too, too big. The character's way too way big for too him. Way too big, to big bro. You think so? No. Yeah. If He's he was in a movie, he would be way too big. No. No. He's way too... He's... He's way too big in the sense that his whole storyline for Ahsoka, I think, is a, one of the biggest storylines. They didn't show Shin or Balin the whole episode. Just to show him at the end, overlooking, like, the I think the biggest plot point that Dave Filoni wants to talk about. There's no way. There's no way they can sweep that under. So the you rug. think recast? Yeah, 100%. They have to yeah, recast him. Recast. Yeah, I mean, that's sad, but I think he's way too... B- or, no, dude, unless what they do is they just give Shin... Balin's storyline and she's like oh I have to go find my master because I don't know what's going on I just don't trust Disney because we couldn't recast Chadwick Boseman and that was like a huge role. That's like, different though. That's that's a bigger role though. That's like when you say like this is like that's a yeah. But he was a face of like a franchise of a franchise, and he was already in like two three movies at that point. I'm yeah. just saying like they can't recast for that. I don't think they'll they'll do it for a smaller role per se. That's what I'm saying. A small smaller role is easier to recast. I just don't think they'll put as much importance to it. Again, you're so like too much. So he thinks it's too small. So they're not gonna do anything about it. But in my head, it's like oh, it's too small. They can easily recast. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, I don't yeah, know. That's that's, I just don't trust thought. Disney at this point. Are we in the golden era of Star Wars? The same way that MCU was in the golden era from the Avengers to like Infinity War? Mm, nah. No, no. No. I really, I, I love the shows. So the there show, we go, uh, guys. The shows are good, but we're not in the golden era. What's the golden era? We haven't been there. I think there's more worse shows than there is good shows. And even seasons if you want to, if we like split it up that like no, by season. No, Man- Mando... Andor. Mando's only good for two seasons. Season three, three sucks. Oh no, no, you you're crazy, my boy. I, I'm gonna look back at the well, Mandalorian. Season two was um with Boba Fett, wasn't it? No, you're thinking about Book of Boba Fett. That was its own show. Yeah. Oh. That was like the worst show. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Andor just perfect. Perfect, yeah. perfect, perfect. Perfect, perfect. I'm gonna perfect. go back and look at our videos and see how many thumbs up he gave each episode <laughs> of Mando. Yeah, season, season three. three. Right. There's a lot. I'm pretty sure I didn't give it that much. Let us know what you guys think of the whole series as a finale. All right, and we'll see you guys next time. Deuces. Thank you for watching. Later.